life seems hard for us handicaps and others to use. you need to shade to get out of the sun. They have really knocked it out of the park for a handicap park. This is really beautiful. And as you can see, if you want to get down to the water, they need to make sure that the handicap can get to the water. Now how nice for you fishermen that want to be on the water and you're in a chair or you have disabilities, you can do it. This is the new park right here in Mile and I hope that people and the handicaps get to use it as families, not just as one individual, but bring the whole family out for a camping. doing here was we want to build a large facility uh, of national caliber with uh, parking, cafe, uh, nice restrooms, overnight parking, and three different tracks uh, that could uh, cover a range of skill levels and bike sizes. What you're looking at here is about six months worth of work. All right. And you got all sorts of great plants here. Everybody is welcome. I mean, what are the caliber of riders and people who are welcome to come up here? Uh, we have people coming on bikes and quads and UTVs, uh, from two-year-olds with training wheels on their 50s to uh, over 60-year-olds on their bikes and their quads out on the main track. So we can cover uh, the full gamut of uh, bike sizes and ages and skill levels. Uh, you got a perfect location, I think, right around uh, 933, a major thoroughfare through the county. It was a pretty much a fast track project. Uh, we had quite a few uh, people from uh, contractors from the local area and uh, awesome support from the local communities, both in Oscoda County and Fairview and Miles. The heritage of the quilt and the art of quilting is a subject that's always fascinated us at Michigan Magazine. We've discovered through our travels around the state that this centuries-old art form knows no bounds, found practice to nearly every culture around the world. From its utilitarian use of keeping families warm and safe from the elements to also maintained as heirlooms, documenting one's heritage and incorporating materials and blocks that tell a unique story. We've interviewed and featured on Michigan Magazine many quilters. Individual quilters, quilt groups, heirloom quilt restorationists, producers and hosts of quilting television shows. We've attended quilting bees, quilting retreats, quilting auctions dedicated to world disaster relief. Quilting is a pastime, a hobby, a business. And to those who truly love making quilts and giving them away to family, friends, and the needy, it can become an obsession. Quilts are objects one can wrap oneself up in and feel the love and devotion in each stitch. Whether it's hand-stitched, inch by inch, or assisted by a bit of machine wizardry, the love is still there among the blocks and designs placed strategically in each quilt. Everyone knows someone or knows someone who knows someone who quilts. Quilts have always been head turners and those who've been bitten by the quilting bug have taken that attribute to a new level in what has turned into the quilt trail. On today's show, we feature one such trail in northeastern Michigan's Oscoda County. The main artist and administrator of the Timberland Quilt Trail is Susan Schantz of Cummins. What exactly is a quilt trail? We visited with Susan at her makeshift workshop at the Clinton Township Fire Hall to find out what the buzz was all about. Well, the quilt trail started down in southern Ohio in 2001. A lady named um, 
Donna wanted to paint a quilt block to honor her mother. So she painted a big quilt block and put it up on her tobacco barn. And from there, it's just caught on. And we now have quilt trails in 47 states and Ontario. Okay, these aren't actual quilts. They're kind of replicas of quilts on, on wood and that it kind of stimulates the... Uh, what, what, the heritage and uh, the yes, uh, kind of memory of quilts? Quilting heritage, you know, rural counties have a lot of uh, quilting traditions. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way to bring them basically off the bed and out of the closet and out into the public where, where everybody can enjoy them. Mm -hmm. So quilters will paint one and put it up that represents maybe a quilt from the family or, mm -hmm. or that type of thing. I want to, you know, celebrate our quilting heritage because it's big up here. And I want to uh, somehow promote people coming here to look at our, our land, our, our, you know, all the rivers and lakes and everything that we've got here. We've got so much here. And this is just one way to bring people, if you're not a hunter or you're not fishing or you're not doing those outdoor activities, then this is something else you can do. It's another way to explore and appreciate Michigan's quilting heritage off the beaten path. All right, on this edition of Michigan Magazine, we're at Amish Country Natural Products. Hi, Roxanne, good morning. Good morning. And we see we've got some, uh, one of your regular vendors here. What do you mean by pampered beef? I mean, you've got some goodies here that you keep stocked here at Amish Country. Well, and they're pretty much, uh, what would you call them, all natural? Uh, it's natural beef, no antibiotics, no hormones, okay. uh, non-GMO feed. Non-GMO? If it's not grass. Okay. Um, Pasture raised. Okay. They're not confined to the feedlot or anything like that. All right. And, uh, and, you've got to, I and I pamper them. They're not, you pamper them. <laughs> and it shows in the, the returning customers they love this. What have you got here? I think you've got some ground beef here that uh, is pretty popular here, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I, I've been amazed how fast it's moving. Uh huh. With, especially for this time of year. Yeah, which. Neat about it is it's all, all locally grown here. This is that seems to be the big yeah. push. And of course, once the warm weather sets in, then the stakes will start to move. Oh my! Yeah, so that's I'll, good. I'll yeah. put up my beef against anybody, like a sirloins or T-bones. Oh, right. We stock just about everything here. But right now, for some reason, the burger is moving. Uh -huh. Of course, uh, do these little petite steaks. Oh my. Uh, they're only they're relatively inexpensive. It's right. small. You've been in business for quite a while and you're in Yeah, I've been doing this about 15 years. Yeah. This particular venue of uh, mm -hmm. the no antibiotics, no hormones, and so forth. Well, you have a web presence? or? I do have a website. It's okay. uh, pamperedbeef.net. Okay. Good. And uh, you can pull us up there and take a look. We also, I have some Amish friends that, that raise pork and uh, lamb for me also. Right.
we are at Mayo's Clinic Sales and Service. Uh, just uh, not too far from, just off uh, 72, aren't you? Correct. Yes. Located yes. not far from uh, Luzerne and Mayo at the same time, Nascota County. Tell us a little bit about what you've got here. Uh, we uh, sell uh, Polaris products. Basically, we have the full line of Polaris. Uh, they do the ATVs, the uh, side-by-side, the Ranger side-by-sides. Uh, they also uh, have the snowmobiles, which was their what they really started out in many, many years ago. Uh, and then also the Victory Bikes, um, it's a division of Polaris. Uh, um, uh, we do the Arctic Cat snowmobiles, uh, we do the uh, steel products, uh, chainsaws, trimmers, blowers. Um, my mom actually started the business in 1959. Uh, we, uh, we were up the road half a mile mm -hmm. and um, got into chainsaws in the early to mid 60s, uh, late 60s, got into uh, the Toro or the wheel horse products. Um, lawn garden stuff, uh, snowmobiles, and then uh, uh, Polaris products we started in uh, 1983. So. Thanks, Dave. All right, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Keith Fisher. I'm a wildlife technician out of the Roscom and Operations Service Center for the DNR. I work for the Wildlife Division. And today we're going to be moving some wild turkeys from southwest Michigan into the Mile Fairview area. Um, the turkey populations up in this area, Mile and Fairview, during, during our census reports have slightly been decreasing over the years. So um, looking at those reports and also talking to a lot of our hunters, we've decided that maybe there's something we can do to revitalize the turkey population in the area. Birds we're getting today, there's 21 birds. We're getting them from both Barry and Ionia counties. Um, we have DNR crew down there that trap those birds. They had areas set up and they have trap nets set and then this morning they were successful at catching those 21 birds. What we'll do is we have a bunch of people here from both the Turkey Federation and the Wild Turkey Hunters Association along with just turkey hunters and other groups that want to see this happen. So they're going to go out with us so everybody can take photos and be part of it. We'll take them out to state land. We're going to open up, we'll set the boxes out on the ground and then we'll open the boxes and let everybody take photos and release some birds. The, the birds being transported will be fine. We rarely lose any birds that way. Um, a lot of it depends on the winters. This winter's been especially mild. We should have very good success this year with these birds doing great, you know, after the release. been painting for oh about 17 years now so I do oils watercolors acrylics and because I think Michigan scenery has so much to offer mm -hmm. I like to capture things from Michigan mostly um, some of Mackinac Island okay. and um, also just um, landscapes and sometimes people doing something in the landscape okay. or and I do commissions if there's a special thing somebody would like and uh, just um, trying to capture that which uh, I believe the Lord's given me a talent and I want to use it and uh, bring uh, peace and joy to the viewer as best I can trying to capture some of his creation. So. There you go. Are you from around here? Are you uh, around yes, I live near here, probably within oh, five to ten miles. What's on tap now? What have you got uh, that you're working on? Anything special that you can tell us about? Well, I've been busy working this winter. It's been kind of a long winter, so yeah, it's, it has, it has yeah. given me the opportunity to be in the art studio um, okay. to finish some projects 
um, projects for Mackinac Island. I also have some work there and lilacs and lace. And um, also I've been working on some gift items for different friends and family and commissions. Some of the Osabo River, which is a gem here. And I did a winter, a fall, and um, a kind of a spring-summer scene of the Osabo um, over this winter. We've got so many nice things. Right down here, you'll notice that we have some Michigan coffee. It comes from Traverse City, and it's wonderful. And again, that's my quest is Michigan, so. We also have a new gluten-free line in, and people, you can tell, people are really uh, taking that to heart because um, I'm always having to fill these shelves up here. So they're enjoying that gluten-free line. And also, my spices, the, um, are are filling up those shelves and people come in specifically for those organic spices. Um, these are made uh, at Petersboro, that's a company in the United States. When I call, they make them for me and then send them. It takes several months for me to get them. Um, and things like a, a cooler in a basket. It's just, they really do some neat things. We also have a new artist in and he is doing some landscape paintings. He's actually self-taught. And we're also working on uh, the Amish Country Natural Products um, uh, Facebook line. So that will be updated uh, once a week and that will tell people what I'm baking on what day so they can come in and get those sorts of things. And I have started taking orders as well. So okay. just trying to do that. Remembering the good old days when cars were cool and dates ended up at drive-ins and soda shops, you can still relive those nostalgic feelings in a brand new 50s and 60s themed restaurant in downtown Mayo. Here at Tin Lizzie's, owners Frank and Lisa Daniels have put their all and complete love into creating a blast from the past. Even the interior booths with etched glass designed and created personally by Frank and Lisa, etched mirrors in the bathrooms and authentic classic cars protruding from the walls, restored authentically in detail by Frank himself in his home garage workshop, add to the ambiance. We visited the restaurant to see for ourselves what all the regional buzz was about this young couple's nostalgic mission to bring back the past in a wonderful dining experience. Frank and Lisa, thank you for allowing us in here today. You've got a brand new business. It's got a great theme. Who's going to tell us about Tin Lizzie and how it came about first? Well, um, we sat back and we decided that when we were going to open the restaurant, we wanted to do something for a theme. Okay. And, and since I was uh, into restoring vehicles, uh, I decided that uh, why not go for the auto uh, auto industry, you know. Okay. And the nostalgia, all the nostalgic uh, uh, being about it. You know, cars have always been a passion. Cars have always been a passion of mine. And and it's just, it just people, I think people long for a simpler time. Uh -huh. in the days that we're in, you know. Uh -huh. So what made you two decide, well, restaurant is the way to go? Well, my husband has had restaurant experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, he used to work at the Troy Hilton years ago in yeah. many different halls, so yeah. he has a lot of experience in that, and I have a lot of the marketing side experience, mm -hmm. so the two of us blended very well together with our ideas, and mm -hmm. that's basically how it yeah. started. Well, you picked a great location. I mean, this building itself has got a lot of history being back in the old car hop days. You talk about a little bit of the menu. Who came up with that and why? Well, we both figured that we should have, you know, names of vehicles for the different sandwiches and so forth. Like we have our Nomad and and we have like a Studebaker baked potato mm -hmm. and um, we have like our Eldorado sandwich, you know, different named car themes, okay. breakfast ideas. We have our yes. big block, our spark plug, <laughs> you know, just yes. different, you know, um, like our cooling systems, our beverages. So very interesting to make people, you know, read through the menu and realize, you know, this is all around, you know, mm -hmm. for a car themed restaurant. Yummy. So come on down to Tin Lizzie's. Tin Lizzie's. We make yes. old fashioned malts, just like you remember. We have the shakes, the malts, the banana splits. We also have Boston coolers, a Tin Lizzie cooler. Um, we also have the Saunders hot fudge cream puff. Many of you are used to. And we also sell like the tin roof. 
the old-fashioned tin roof with the uh, chocolate syrup and the Spanish nuts. So we have a variety of different type of ice creams and of course the, our ice cream is also Michigan made, House of Flavors. We have a turtle brownie sundae which is delicious so sometime you all have to come down to Tin Lizzie's and try all of our malts and shakes and we'll bring you right back to the 1950s and 60s. The, the logo is the thing that I'm the most proud of. Uh, the car's very nostalgic, but the logo is, is something that me and my wife personally designed together. And uh, I'm, I'm the most proud of it. Uh, I couldn't be happier. It's a win-win situation for the students and the community in general. I mean, oh, bringing yeah. the kids together and uh, they've got something here that they can really be proud of, too. Oh, sure. The place is going to be absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the uh, a sideline to that, all the drywall that's been hung throughout this entire building was done by students last summer uh, with me and a couple other uh, adult volunteers. Uh, so those guys got a taste for a little bit of the construction trade relative to drywalling and taping and mudding and all that. And that was the entire building. These guys are doing the finishing touches with uh, the lockers itself. The students are installing the lockers that they made out at My Fair Chiefs, mm -hmm. and uh, they worked very hard on it. And this is this is the day that they're installing them, getting them ready for the football season next year. Um, we've got 14 or 15 students in the program now, and um, we've got kids from both Fairview and Mayo yes. coming together, aren't we? Yep, Fairview and Mayo. It's dual enrolled through Curtin College. Um, so, so Kirtland College and uh, Milo Fairview, the high schools, are all coming together to give them really a hands-on application of construction and woodworking, right? Yep, it's a vocational woodworking initiative um, that we worked out with um, both the schools, the Kirtland College, okay. and we came up with My Fair Cheese. It's actually the Economic Development Alliance um, okay. is the, um, the program that we run it through for a nonprofit. This community and the Economic Development Fund, they're doing amazing stuff around here. But another cool thing is they have a Kirtland instructor here, so these kids are also earning college credit. What? Direct college credit that they'll earn as part of this. So that's the cool part for me, is watching them leave high school already with some college credit. So it's great to see Kirtland and uh, the schools coming together, all with my fair, and it's just my something fair. that's that uh, I think it's time has come in yes. developing the community. Involved. Absolutely, and when this course started out in the fall, it's not ending up that way. There's been some amazing projects, and so the fact that they can build lockers for the high school at such a reduced cost, and the schools are on such tight budgets already, that's amazing. They've also got a bunch of cabinetry for a local church that's going in. They have just done some very unique projects, and that's, I mean, that's the cool thing. They're learning about community, community service, working together. You've got two different schools coming together and students working together. Um, there's so much more than earning college credit or learning some of these carpentry skills, and that's what's cool. All right, we're at Hitchman's Acres. We're getting ready for the season, and are you all set? We are. We're ramping up, and we've been doing a lot of uh, renovating in the cabins mm -hmm. and getting um, the equipment ready and water tested and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we're gearing up and ready to go. I bet you everybody's biting at the bit to get on the river. You've had a few that have already went down the river this year, haven't you? Yep, yep. We had a pretty good Memorial Weekend. Good. Um, last week, we put um, on Saturday, we put men as many as we did on Memorial Weekend, so very excited about that, and we're just getting ready to get geared up and ready to go. Yeah, like Erica says, it's best 
if you call ahead and let everybody know that you're coming so you can reserve a spot because you can't guarantee that if you're a last minute type thing. Right, right. Canoes usually aren't an issue, but rafts um, and kayaks, the, um, people are really going to those. So we ask that you call because that way you get exactly what you want to go down the river. Right, and you've got trips from a few hours to overnight, don't you? Correct. Okay. Yep. Actually, we've had a lot of overnighters this year. Um, everywhere from uh, two to three days, four days. Um, they can go as long as they want. Sometimes they have to portage, so some people don't want to do that. But uh, we have all, all types of trips that they just need to give us a call. And we have a, a gentleman inside, Craig, and can help you with any questions you have about campsites along the way and, and that type of thing. Right, bring the whole family, have a good time. Absolutely. It's a beautiful time of year. Making memories for, you know, years to come and, and look back on it. So right. it, it's been a great, great experience for us. Right, and of course you've got the, the cabins and the rentals and things of that sort. You've got your trout pond and, and a beach area down there too, don't yep. you? Yep, yep, We actually have two, uh, two ponds and we have some, a uh, couple paddle boats. We're getting another paddle boat this mm -hmm. week, so we'll have it. Um, and they can trout fish and there's bass and all kinds of other fish in the other one. Mm -hmm. And our cabins, like I say, we were re 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 uh, renovating those. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, just been trying to update them a little bit and to keep them, you know, where people want to keep coming and just mm -hmm. a good thing. So oh, Very good. You're keeping the tradition alive here on the Assemble at Hinchman Acres. Thank you very much. Wish you a good summer and we'll be back to check it out on the river. All right. Thank you. We just love success stories at Michigan Magazine, especially when it's an update involving a past guest on Michigan Magazine. We're talking about the Michigan Asabo Valley Railroad, just south of Fairview, Michigan. As you may recall, we featured the family-owned miniature railroad many years ago. We told you how the Schrader family hobby became a full-time tourist business. The business at that time also included a successful railroad-related mail-order catalog business. Well, sit back and hold on to your seat as we bring you this update. The railroad has grown, not only in the length of the train ride itself that draws thousands each year, but wondrous things have been happening in their mail order business. Thousands of orders are creating a demand for expansion in a line of ever-increasing products and a physical plant. Now, since we were here last time, uh, we've got quite the facility here now. Uh, yeah, we built this in 2003. 2003. And uh, we put it in. To get out of the house, we were in the house for 10 years. Oh boy. And we had three desks in the, in the living room. <laughs> oh really? Now this is part of the operation nobody probably knows. Yeah, the thing is, what we want to do is make it look like the rest of the outside railroad. So nobody actually knows what the, uh, right. what's going on in here. It looks like mm -hmm. a garage and we, we yeah. had people in the ass, oh well, just a garage. <laughs> Explain what we got there. here. I mean this is uh, Well this is our, our call center. Uh, we bring uh, the orders come in here. They either come in by uh, telephone, they come in by fax or internet, mm -hmm. and then we inter or we process them here, and then they go into the middle room and be processed as far as the credit cards are concerned. Wow, how many stations you and, got here? Uh, we have enough for ten stations. Okay. And uh, then we have three more in the basement of the house that we don't have set up right now oh, for expansion. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we have um, uh, one in the back room where we have the. Um, the development of the catalog, that's where we developed the catalog in the back room. Everything, Howard, that when <laughs> you started laying the track and you had these ideas that you'd ever, It'd ever, be this ever come this far? No, yes. not at all, no. not at all. It's just a dream come true. It's kind of yeah. progressed naturally, didn't it? I mean, Yeah, I did. Well, the thing is we came we up here the, yeah. and, and got the property and we wanted to do the railroad, but the thing is we had to have a way to pay for it. <laughs> Yeah. So the thing is that uh, we started the mail order business in, in hopes that it would yeah. take off. The first catalog was wasn't as big as it is now. Well, the, the first I mean, catalog was like six pages. Really? Yeah. And then the second <laughs> one had uh, uh, 48 pages. It was a small tabulary. Uh -huh. And then that progressed to a eight and a half by 11 catalog. The mailing list of the very first wasn't. Uh, oh no! The mm -hmm. first, the first mailing list we, we thought was very big was was uh, 20,000. Well, that is. Yeah, now we, we, we just did uh, 506,000. <laughs> so it's a little different now. Yeah. So the, the customer base, we have a very loyal customer base. Yes. That we have, and, and it's a really a good good group of people. And they're all over the country. I mean, from the West Coast to the East Coast, mm -hmm. uh, from Washington to Florida. So what room is this here? This actually is the, um, the visa room where we put the visas. The visa runs them, they're noisy. 
And so we put them in here. This is also the control uh -huh. center for like where we check things, things come in to be checked in. Uh -huh. And uh, the orders, the back orders are filled in here. Okay. The fax machines in here, that's a little noisy too. What's the, what part of well, this is, this is, this is our, our Chauncey's um, <laughs> little thing that he's here. Computer, eh? Yeah, that's, that's our kid thing. <laughs> we're we're kid-friendly here. Okay. okay. And it's part <laughs> of the family good. operation. Yeah. 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 yeah, you have a website too, don't you? Well, we have yeah. three websites. Three websites. <laughs> What we have in here is the, the mainframes. Oh, this is where... And uh, we can handle up to 48 lines in here. And so the thing is, this is our... The, the system we had before was just a tele, telephone two lines, and now we've got a T1 system and an answering system and an online hold system. There. That's your server? That's, a, oh, that's one of them, yeah. That's why you have a T1, okay. Right. And wow. so the thing is, this little black box is a T1 here. No kidding. And then this is, goes to all the, the buildings. Actually, we have the phone lines go to all the buildings, the station, the freight house, the house. And then, like I said, we have more, more facilities in the basement and the house that we have set up uh, for phone yeah. lines. Isn't it time to kind of frame it in and... <laughs> I think so. Work it now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the thing is, going to be, you know, yeah. because uh, uh, we're, we're organized now. We were so cramped oh. before. The thing is, now everybody feels you know, very comfortable with, with the situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The catalog so, comes out how many times a year? Just one actually, time, three times. Three a year. times a year, yeah, and, it, and it's all produced here now, isn't it? Pretty much. Well, we produce it in actually, the back. Yeah, I'll show you that. Okay. Okay. In the back here, we have a room that we do that. We set up the photography, and we take pre-photography shots, and then. Uh, we send them down to Atlanta, Georgia, to have them. Actually, they know how to light them. Okay? I see. The I lighting see. And, and the digital is all done digitally. Ah. And then we uh, bring it back here, and we put it on the computer, and we use a court program for it, and we put it together here. And the girls write, do all the write-ups. I'm not a writer, so the girls do the write-ups. Wow. And uh, they work on that, and then we put the, the big JPEGs of all the pictures and put that on the on the internet here. Mm -hmm. Also, that's all done. Right? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Any idea what your number one product is, oh, Howard? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Actually, it's a it's a railroad crossing signal this year. Oh really? And it stands about this high. It has two flashers on it. You put money on it. It's a bank for kids. Oh. And yeah. it it goes off and it, it has a you know sound railroad sounds, very popular this year. Here's a new item that uh, <laughs> we came out with this year. And the thing is, a fellow down in, in Missouri, a lot of the guys are railroad enthusiasts that develop these things. But this is a coupler that goes on the shank of your, in the back of your pickup, mm -hmm. your car. And just a kind of a uh, novelty thing. <laughs> but this has been a real super item right now. Really? You can't even get them fast enough. Really? <laughs> yeah. Isn't neat? Yeah. Wow. So this is for the two inch and this is for the inch. Here, you know. <laughs> Just something a little, little more fun. Yeah, <laughs> real train enthusiast. Oh, yeah. We develop about a quarter of our own items. In other words, we, um, we do, work with a um, manufacturer, and uh, they'll develop like affigans, pillows, mm. uh, pins. Uh, actually, we've actually put together weather vanes, uh, jewelry, okay, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we deal with a lot of the uh, railroad enthusiasts who do the same thing that we do, we just support the hobby, okay? And we support them <laughs> and they support us and I get to play with the railroad yeah. outside. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to have a business that you love and that makes other people happy? Well, it seems the Schraders of Fairview, Michigan are living that dream and at the same time putting Michiganders to work and stimulating the local economy. There's no doubt that when you visit the Asable Valley Railroad in person or online, you get that feeling that those behind the scenes or the ones you make personal contact with are having a ball. That's the main thing. Enjoy life. Make people happy and leave them smiling. Howard was quick to point out that it all boils down to having fun and keeping his trains on the track and running. It's still a love of the Schrader family. One thing for certain, it wasn't an overnight success story. It was a story of dedication, determination, and perseverance, which seems to be key ingredients in many of the stories of success we feature in our travels throughout the state. Trials and tribulations are always part of a successful scenario. Sounds rather cliche, but that's what truth becomes. It was a chilly autumn day. We last visited the Fairview Station. The Schraders opened it up for special color tours the first two weekends in October. On occasions like these, Howard brings out his prized steam engine that has a unique history of its own he's quick to share with the dozens of railroad hobbyists that visit the station from all over the U.S. each year during the summer and autumn seasons. So there you have it, another update of one of our past features here on Michigan Magazine. 
a family Michigan destination, just down the road from the Michigan Magazine Museum. The Asabo Valley Miniature Railroad of Fairview, Michigan.